Angels Journal Life. Well, welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watts and in today's video we're going to look at five number sixes Rangers could sign this summer. Obviously a bit difficult to do considering we don't know what the budgetary restrictions are going to be given that we didn't qualify for the Champions League but I'd rather not talk about that. I ran a poll at the start of the week on Twitter and the majority of fans seem to think that we need to prioritise a number six. I would probably agree looking at how well kind of Conor Barron settled in. The potential we've got in Diamandi. I think having a solid number six to be able to move Diamandi further forward should be a priority. Like I said, we don't know what the budget's going to be, we don't know how much we're going to be able to get for players we're trying to sell, the likes of Todd Cantwell and Yanis Hadji. So this was looked at before the exit to the Champions League. I still think if we sell a couple of players, some of these could be realistic, but we might need to scale back to get more players in. But again, it's a really interesting list of players that are available, so let's get started. And due to our exit from the Champions League, we're going to start off with players with the highest transfer market value first and work our way down, because these ones are probably the most unrealistic at this point but again you never know the asking price for clubs and kind of what we're going to be able to do in terms of outgoings. So the first player Benjamin Tahirovic, 21 year old Bosnia, 6 foot 3 currently plays for Ajax. He's actually been told he can leave, he's not in Francesco Farioli's plans so he's been told he could find a new club. Transfer market haven't valued at 4.2 million but I don't know what Ajax are going to look at in terms of kind of what they can get back for him. I think they paid 7.5 million euros for him last summer. So they might be looking to recoup that value or they might just be looking to get what they can and maybe add a bigger sell on if they can't get the 7.5 million. Looking at his key stats, 26 appearances, 18 starts, 2 goals and 4 assists, 88.7% pass accuracy, 58.8% long ball accuracy, 0.92 chances created per 90, 1.40 interceptions per 90, 7.18 recoveries per 90, 70.6% tackles 1 per 90, 47.4% duels 1. Again, you look at those numbers and you can't really understand why Farrell would be so kind of desperate to sell him. Very talented young footballer, like I say, he's probably better as a number six, but uses a more conservative number eight, not the most creative going forward. Despite the fact he almost created one chance per night when he was playing last season, going along with having four assists as well. Very good passer of the ball, good at breaking the lines. The type of player that we need in there, again, look at the recovery numbers, interception numbers, really high percentage of tackles won. Jules one you might be hoping for a bit better from, but again, it all comes down to the kind of volume of it instead of the actual percentage. The volume's high and then there's a chance the percentage is going to be lower. But he's a tough tackling midfielder in there. Six foot three, big and strong, exactly what a lot of supporters have kind of wanted for the player that sits in front of the fence. Someone that's big, strong, wins tackles, put themselves about, but also have the quality on the ball to bring it forward and be able to break the lines. That's what you get for Tahirovic. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see what I are sort of looking for him and kind of what his next move is. But if he could push the budget out, I think he'd be an incredible option. Bosnian international already, I think he's got a really high ceiling. And again, I'm really surprised that Ajax don't see a future for him there. Sticking with those kind of big, strong presences in front of the defence, we're going to go Mirko Topic, 23 year old Serbian, 6 foot 2, currently plays for Formilicao in Portugal. Transfer market having valued at 3 million, looking at his key stats from last season. 32 appearances, 26 from the start, he's got 2 assists, 86.5% pass accuracy, 65.9% long ball accuracy, 76.5% tackles 1 per 90, 1.8 interceptions per 90, just over 7 recoveries per 90, 61% duels 1 and 66.2% aerial duels 1. Look at some of those percentiles on the right hand side, 83rd for aerial duels 1, 71st for defensive actions, again a really solid defensive midfielder. Big, tall, strong, very good passer of the ball. Look at those passing numbers. 86.5% pass accuracy with almost 66% long ball accuracy. Then you move into the defensive side of it. 76.5% tackles, 1 per 90. The 1.8 interceptions and the just over 7 recovery shows how well he reads the game. Gets across the ground very well. He just knows where to position himself. The type of player that the likes of one of the fullbacks move forward, he's able to shift and cover those areas. Not the quickest, but again, he's no slouch. So he's good at kind of covering those areas, getting into the full back, the type of thing that Ryan Jack used to do when James Tavernier born forward. That's what Topic is kind of capable of. And like I said, he's still a very good passer of the ball. He can still break those lines. He's not going to be the chance creator further up the pitch. Like I wouldn't recommend him playing him as an eight or try to push him any further forward. I think he's perfect for sitting in front of the defence, breaking up the play, keeping the ball moving. He's a very talented player. Again, he's only 23 and he gives that big, strong presence in front of the defence type of thing we've been looking for. Again, be interesting to see what Vermilicao were looking for him. Trust for market having valued at 3 million. 
I think he's got potential to grow as well. He's obviously got that experience of playing the Portuguese top flight, which is a much better standard than Scottish football. So the standard shouldn't be an issue. Again, the type of player that I think if there is a chance that we can get him, we should really be looking at exploring that option. Moving on to a different type of player and someone I've previously covered in the five players range you can sign from Argentina video. So Elian Arala, he's 20 years old, Argentine, 5 foot 8, currently plays for San Lorenzo. Transfer market and value at 2.6 million. Eight appearances so far this season, seven from the start, doesn't have any goals or assists. 74.3% pass accuracy, 34.1% long ball accuracy, 75% tackles won, 0.64 interceptions per 90, 10.7 recoveries per 90, 53.2% duels won. 47.8% aerial duels won. Look at some of his defensive percentiles as well. 90th for defensive actions, 83rd for aerial duels won. Even 69 for shot attempts and 61 for touches. Like I said, he's a bit of a different player to the likes of Topic and Tahirovic. He's very much in the Reno Gattuso type mode. He's going to put himself about. He knows how to read the game very well, which you can tell by the 10.7 recoveries. He just gets stuck in and about. You'd look at the passing numbers and maybe hope they were a bit higher, but again, He's still young, it's a side of his game that he's working on, but the defensive numbers are brilliant. Again, he puts himself about, he's not the big, strong presence, but he is that high-energy player that would allow the likes of Baron and Diamandi to move further forward. Again, can cover fullbacks when they go forward, he's really disciplined defensively. Perhaps discipline is maybe something they can look at in terms of the fills he picks up and he's that kind of fiery presence you might expect from a South American defensive midfielder. Like I say, I compare them to Gattuso and I think it's a fair comparison, he's not the type of player you want further forward and playing that kind of final creative pass, but he is going to break up the play, he is going to win you the ball back and keep the ball moving. He's athletic, he's probably more athletic than the two options that we've went through previously. So there is a lot of room to grow, like I say, he's only 20, he's had a lot of first team experience so far for a young age. I think he's the type of player that would transition really well to not just Scottish football, but European football. I think he does have a big future ahead to be a player at the base of the Argentine midfield. Transfer market only have him valued at 2.6 million, but it's kind of hard to tell with the South American market whether a player's going to go for 5 million or 10 million. So I don't know what San Lorenzo would be looking for. But he is the type of player that we need there that's high energy, going to get stuck in, be able to control that area of the pitch, which we haven't had much of recently. Could work on his passing, but again, it's more the forward passes that he's kind of failing on. And for the long ball accuracy, as long as he's winning the ball back and keeping the ball moving, can look to players like Baron or Diamandi to play those longer balls or even the likes of Robin Proper, who I thought his passing was very impressive the other night. So he's a different type of player to the two options we've had, but again, would you turn down a Reno Gattuso type? I know I definitely wouldn't. Now going to the Mexican league that, again, we've not had great history of, looking at the likes of Eduardo Herrera and Carlos Peña, but Jose Caicedo, 22-year-old Colombian, he's six foot, currently plays for Unam Pumas. Transfer market have been valued also at 2.6 million. His starts for this season, 16 appearances, 15 starts. He's got one goal, 87% pass accuracy, 57.5% long ball accuracy, 54.5% tackles won, 0.93 interceptions per 90, 5.13 recoveries per 90, 52% duels won and 56.1% aerial duels won. Ranks really highly in those aerial duels won with 88%, 59 for defensive actions, 59 for touches, so he does get involved in the play as a type of player that can probably play further forward. He's the quickest and most athletic of the players we've looked at so far. Good ability driving with the ball forward. But again, he is good in those defensive areas. Good percentage of tackles won, just under the one interception, over five recoveries. Good percentage of duels won, over 50. So the numbers are there, the numbers are good. He's only 22 as well, plenty of room to grow. The Colombian, again, they've settled kind of quite well when it comes to when it comes to Rangers recently. You look at Obviously, the success of Morelos, it looked like Cortez was going to be a success. Judy's still out on that one when he comes back from injury, what he's going to be able to do. But again, looking at players in that area, I think Caicedo's a really interesting option. Gives that athleticism, the power, the energy that we've lacked having someone like John Lundstrom in there in previous seasons. It's something that we need. His passing numbers are a lot better than Aral's a good passer to the ball that's good at breaking the lines. He is a player that, again, like I say, can play further forward. And he is capable of playing those defence splitting passes and creating chances. Just really good at driving the ball forward with his athleticism and breaking up the play, winning the ball back. He's probably the most forward-thinking option that we've looked at so far. And I think that's what makes him really interesting. Again, when it comes to North America and the transfer fees, it's really hard to tell what they'd want. But the transfer market, having valued at 2.6 million, you get him anywhere around it, I think you're getting an absolute bargain. 
now for me the most interesting player on the list somehow the one that's valued the lowest in transfer market and he's already an Italian international and why I put him in the thumbnail Salvatore Esposito is 23 years old Italian 5 foot 9 currently plays for Spezia in Serie B again like I said transfer market I'm valued at 2.4 million looking at his key stats 37 appearances 34 from the start get one goal and five assists last season 86.4% pass accuracy, 52% long ball accuracy, 67.6% tackles, 1 per 90, 1.53 interceptions per 90, 8.05 recoveries per 90, 62.6% duels won, 46.5% aerial duels won. Look at those percentiles on the right-hand side. 99th for touches, 94th for chances created, 85th for defensive actions, 52nd for aerial duels won, 61 for short attempts, then sitting low, 22 for goals, but... I don't understand why this guy's still in Serie B and why he's not been snapped up this summer or why he wasn't snapped up last summer. Like I say, he's been capped by Italy, so they obviously seen the potential in him that he's good enough to play for his national team while having mostly played a lot of his first team action in Serie B. Just a quality player at 23, I think he really needs to make the step up. You're probably looking to step up to Serie A, but anywhere he can get European football can get his name out there, get him back in that Italian setup because he's so, so good if you watch. The footage of me so comfortable on the ball, comfortable taking the ball under pressure, turns players really easy. Always looking for the ball, doesn't matter if there's a man on his back, he always makes space for himself. Again, like I say, if he gets on the ball and he's got a man in the back, he's capable of turning him. Look at the passing numbers are really good. The percentage of tackles, one at 67.6. Over eight recoveries, reads the game well. I just, I honestly can't understand why he's still playing at that level. Like I say, surely the early cap, you would think, would be able to make Serie A teams kind of take the gamble on him. I don't even think it is a gamble. I think he's ready to make that step up at 23 years old. I think he needs to take it now. Not that he's nearing the end of his career or his prime or anything, but he's got so much potential and I think he needs to show it out with Serie B. Transfer market on value at 2.4 million. I don't know what it's going to take for Spezia to release him, but he's a type of player that's worth breaking the bank for and spending whatever money you have on if the priority really is a number six. And I don't see many options out there that are better than Salvatore Esposito, especially that are playing in a league that is essentially, reputation-wise at least, a lot lower than the Scottish level and playing with a team that's reputation is a lot lower than Rangers, be coming here to play European football in front of 50,000 fans eventually when we get back to Ibrox. I just think he's the best option on the list for me, the one that transfer market have his market value the lowest, which again I don't understand, I don't understand why he's still in Serie B. So if there's a chance that Rangers could get Salvatore Esposito, I really, really implore them to look at him and try and get him in. So again, I've kind of looked at these players before European exit, but I still think even if we got that extra four million in, then Cummins was really dependent on getting players out. So the players on this list and if we'd be able to get them in all depends on the sales of if it is players like Hadji, if it is Cantwell, if we do eventually look to sell on Dessers, it all depends on who goes out, what we can actually afford and again, what the clubs are looking for for these players. But I think these are all players that walk into the Rangers first team do a massive improvement in the number six area. I say improvement in the number six area. I say that as in we'd be able to drop Tom Lawrence, move Diamande further forward, have someone else in the six, so I'm counting it as a Lawrence replacement because we get to move Diamande further forward. That's what I mean by massive improvement. I'm not saying an improvement in Connor Barron or he deserves to be dropped. It's more the fact that we'd be able to shift Lawrence onto the bench or potentially shift him out of the club if that was a possibility. But please let me know your thoughts on the players. If you have any other ideas for videos we can do, let me know. Like I've said, it's kind of hard to know what the budget is when players aren't probably moving out as quickly as we'd like. But I can look at kind of bargain players, players that transfer market haven't valued under a certain level to see if there's more bargains out there. I've done it previously with strikers and wingers, so I could do it for other positions as well. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. And again, if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.